participation okay. portion. We will run the timer exactly the same. And uh, David Robinson, you'll go ahead and field the first question. Oh, okay. Uh, our first question comes from Sean. Thanks for being here. Thanks for doing this, all of you. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about um, community development. Uh, and uh, as we all know, if we're going to attract jobs, build jobs in this community, uh, we have to have the kind of uh, community that people want to live in, uh, the kind of uh, community they want to bring their families to. And we've made a lot of great strides in that area in recent years. And each one of you, in your own way, has talked about uh, how things you'd like to see develop in the community. But I'd like to hear each of you talk specifically about the kinds of things you want to happen in this community to develop this community so it's the kind of community that we can all be proud of that we all want to live in and attract business to. Okay, thank you for the question, Sean. Uh, certainly a big part of uh, economic development is community development. And over the last eight years, that's, uh, that was one of my uh, uh, promises, campaign promises in, uh, I believe, 05, 06, is to start trying to, uh, I think I used the term, put a little lipstick on the old girl. Uh, and that's what we have tried to do coming through here. Uh, the development of the, uh, certainly the Dixie Park, Rockabilly, the murals, that obviously brings in tourism. We've had the uh, distinct uh, uh, opportunity of working with AIM and certainly the Chamber uh, to bring in our festivals. Uh, that attracts a number of uh, Tourists, obviously, through the uh, uh, through the year, uh, working with the chamber, we've uh, uh, and Russell. Uh, thank goodness he's got uh, he's got more ideas than we can fund, I think. But uh, he's always working along that. Uh, in order to bring industry, and I know Sean, you sit on the industrial development board, and I'm, I'm going to go back to uh, workforce readiness, uh, uh, the uh, skills that. Uh, Industries are now requiring. It's not. It's not industries uh, of decades ago where they, you know, put on uh, some boats or whatever. Today's uh, uh, industries use technology, robotics, uh, computer, uh, math, science, and that's where. And I agree with Tony. I mean, we've we've got to get our workforce up, and not only our young folks, but we also need to encourage. Our existing workforce to upgrade their skills, and those those opportunities are out there. Uh, part of the last dollar uh, scholarship that is eligible for non-traditional students as well. Uh, uh, the GEDs that folks are coming back and getting. So we have to encourage our existing workforce to upgrade their skills, and then working in conjunction with uh, Joint Economic Development Board, certainly Industrial Development Board, MRA, the state, and all the other agencies that we work with to get those opportunities so we can showcase, one, our community, and two, our workforce. Thank you. 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 Th
would think that eight years would be plenty of time to pay the streets because I went up Shannon Drive and I was coming down Shannon Drive one way and I stopped at the lady's house and she said, look out there at the remaining down to, to East Park, or excuse me, uh, to uh, 64. You look and there's big holes out of one pavement to the other. Now, if, in eight years, if we had been paid in one street, or uh, you know, every month, I'm sure that we could have paid all the streets in, in Selma. So we need to do some kind of program where we uh, systematically improve our infrastructure and not let it go and go and go until we have these conditions where this lady says she calls uh, City Hall and gets no response other than we don't have the money. Well, did we have the money before? And if we're in such good financial shape, couldn't we pay some of them? Or couldn't we pay parts of them that are so bad? I think so. Uh, and the signs, the street signs, I keep going back to it. I don't know how expensive these things are. I guess they're pretty expensive because obviously we've got one right down by one of our major banks that is atrocious. It is rusted almost, but it's about to fall apart. And I think we could have a city worker go down there with two cans of paint and a, and a scrub brush like I did and fix this site. They're, they're like that all over town. And except we're, we're all, uh, citizens have put their own signs up like on the Molly Drive and so forth. Uh, and there's other grants that are available, like uh, a uh, economic development assistance program through the EDA, uh, Department of Justice, COPS grant for school resource officers. It was available last year, and I anticipate it being available this year. And that's what I work with the Southwest Tennessee Development District. I know how to write those grants, and I know how to get them. Uh, Safe routes to school grants. That's uh, something that Adamsville just got. And we can get that. I don't, to my knowledge, we've never written one and tried to get to increase the infrastructure or to make it better. The Governor's Highway Safety Council safety grants, Federal Highway Enhancement grants, and of course we've gotten several uh, LPRF grants for the parks. But we need to, to uh, definitely do this. And the other thing that I mentioned before is the pay it forward one, where our citizens help each other and help uh, worthy organizations. Thank you. Uh, same question to you, sir. Okay, thank you. I believe the question was for Sean Bank, things you'd like to see done to help develop industry, I, unless I misunderstood it, but I believe that's what the question was. Listen, I said earlier, Selma has got to be marketed, and, and I'm, and I'm going to kind of go into the detail here a little bit. I have lived in Selma for four years. This is my home, never left. I've always been here. This is where I'll continue to, to stay and live to the good Lord takes me home. But Selmer's got to be marketed. And let me tell you how you do that. You brag on the things you have. I saw the fire chief back there sitting in the back for Selma. It reminded me. Uh, if you live in Selma, your insurance rate is 46, 48% less than if you live outside the city limits. And that is because of an ISO rate that Selma has, which is a fold. The county has a nine. They're working towards lower in that. But we've worked very hard. As a 14-year veteran of the fire department of Selma, those, those guys are, are dear to my heart. And I, and I, I feel like I've worked very, very hard uh, alongside the fire department as, uh, as he has written many grants. And, uh, and I, I've been right there with him, helping all along. So you brag on those things. 46% your homeowner's insurance, that's what it is in Selma. Well, well, what else? We have a college. Uh, that, that's something that you brag on. In my opinion, I don't think we've scratched the surface on, on, on our college. Uh, we have a UPS center. That, that's another thing that, that you brag on for Selma. You got to sell it, folks. If you love Selma and you have compassion about the folks that live in Selma, then things are going to come. We have, just like I said, UPS center. Chester County doesn't have that. Baldwin doesn't have that. Hardin County doesn't have that. But we do, and we brag on it. And this new business is moving into uh, <coughs> down at the industrial park, into the uh, into the old Heath Hill building. UPS has actually had to hire two more employees just to help get all the shipment out. Hey, you brag on those things. 
those are things that are important. Those are things that, that are dear to my heart. And um, it just continued to, 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 to work on those things. There's so many other things. The, uh, the hospital, McNary Regional Hospital, takes to hire two random doctors. One's a surgeon, one is a senior, uh, an OBGYN. So, uh, you know, that, that's great. They're working hard, and I will work hard for you as your next mayor. Thank you. Uh, Roger, uh, final uh, you on this one, and then we'll go ahead and uh, choose another audience for this question. Tony Chapman will fill the next question following you. <coughs> I believe we were talking about community development when that was a question. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh. Uh, I think that before we can get any factory or anything much in here, the mayor was talking about the workforce, and I agree. But they don't want people, most of them like us. They don't want me. I'm an old man now. They don't want me. I can't even get a job as a greeter at Walmart. Now, what I think they've done, I think they've done away with them. Uh, what we need is young people, and the young people are leaving almost as soon as they get their education. And in their college, they're leaving town. And one of the reasons for this, there's absolutely nothing for people to do. If you go to a movie, you have to go to Car Anthony Jackson, or may I think it's about May I want. If you want to do anything, just about, you want to. We got a lot of easy place, but the real good ones, uh, again, you got to go out of town. So the thing that I see is we need to do something and get some things moving to get the young people to stay here. And I think one good move in that direction would be to get a Class A uh, center for young people. Something that to make them want to stay here. And uh, maybe even subsidize somebody to get a movie theater in here. But uh, when I say uh, a youth center, I'm talking about a place that they can go and have a variety of things. A quiet room with some computers where if they've a lot of problem at home, they can do their homework there. They maybe a big TV room where they can, with their friends. And think, oh, uh, then on outside have a uh, the other part, the racket part, have a a, uh, a good little snack bar thing, have some arcade, have a pool table, jukebox, little dance place, something for the young people, something to keep them here. And that's uh, I'm out of time, but there are some other things we could do too. But we've got to take care of the youth if we want to draw people in here, the factories don't want old people working for them. Okay, the independent appeal publisher, Janet Rail, will go ahead and field and choose the next audience participation question. We have a question right here. Hi, my name is Pollyanna Justice, and I serve on the uh, chamber board this time. This is my second uh, term to be able to serve on the chamber board, so I have um, had the opportunity to be able to um, discuss some of these situations that bring in the businesses and, and uh, things like that, and also working for the hospital for 17 years, 17 and a half years, um, afforded me the opportunity to also see what are people looking for, because when we do market to doctors, when we do market to outsiders, what are they looking for when they come to us? Um, one of the questions that I have, and I know Mr. Peel just got through um, talking a lot about it, and that is how do we keep the youth here? Because we do have an older population, and a lot of our youth are leaving. Um, so my question is, because this is the questions we get asked by the doctors and, and different people that are coming in here, what do you have to offer to my children? And a lot of times it's not the doctors that don't want to come here, it's their wives. Okay, because they're the ones that have to um, take care of the children and make sure that they've got stuff for the kids to do. So what, what kind of things would you be considering 
to help with the youth, to, to draw the youth, to keep the youth here? And how would you subsidize that? Because it takes money. There's been several years back, we looked at a huge sports complex. You know, trying to build in a, you know, bring in a sports complex. Because if we talked about how, if we held tournaments here, how that would draw in revenue. And that was talked about and it kind of went away. Um, so, what, you know, what would you do and how would you subsidize it? Because the money's got to come from somewhere. And it doesn't, you just can't pull it out of air. So, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think to, uh, in order to keep the youth here, number one, we have to have some jobs and some opportunities for them to come back. But I think it's it's kind of a chicken and the egg thing, where you've got to start somewhere. And the place I see us starting is in livability and in education. We have got to have the best school system anywhere around when companies start to look. And I, I keep going back to Selmer Elementary, but we need a new school. I have been in contact with the CFO uh, of the solar farm, and he wants to sell us 30 acres, the school board, to build a school behind Pickman Collector. And he is going to sell it to us uh, about half the price that they're getting for it. And I'm trying to get, right now, the Board of Education go along with buying that, going ahead and buying that, because that's one of the drawbacks that uh, some of the county commissioners are saying, well, they don't even have a, a land decided on yet. Well, we do have land decided on. We know approximately how much it's going to cost to develop any piece of land that we get between uh, $650,000 to $750,000. Any piece of 30-acre land, no matter what the terrain is, uh, unless we have to build a wall or something. Uh, so we, we have known that for many years. Uh, I think another thing that we have to do uh, is to uh, be able to show the prospective employers or, or businesses that are going to come that we do have a good education system. And I think we have right now a very good education system other than our plant. And uh, I, I just think that that, that is the key to everything. It's, it's the key to breaking the chicken and the egg syndrome. It is to have education opportunities, and that gives extracurricular activity uh, opportunities for, for the kids, for their kids. And then in turn, it gives them opportunities to get scholarships to go to college. And then if we make our town livable by doing things to the infrastructure, uh, to beautify it, to have uh, new revenue streams with doing more festivals and so forth to draw visitors from out of town to our county and then get some industry. Uh, I think that we can uh, go a long way in keeping our youth here and bringing them back after they finish their college education, hopefully. We have a year up grant that uh, I helped write for the county uh, out at uh, McNair Central and Adamsville High School. That's just that. I worked in it for five years over at Bolivar, administering the grant and, and getting kids to go to college. We had a very good success rate. We had a graduation rate of 67% when I started the program and 87% uh, uh, five years later. And we had uh, approximately 40% of the seniors going to college. And then at the finish of the program, we had 65%. So there are some things we can do. We have some good things going on. We just need to, to improve upon. John Smith, the same question to you. Thank you, Pollyanna, and also thank you for serving on the Chamber Board. Uh, it's, it's, it's folks like you that uh, help, help move forward together, and that's what it's all about. You know, it was mentioned about uh, the things about the youth. Uh, that I believe that the city should also should, should definitely get involved with, with more activities that the, that the Civic Center uh, can offer. I'd like to see that place full every weekend, every week. You know, the park, we have a park. Uh, get the kids involved, and the city can do that. And uh, when you surround yourself with smart people, you know, I was talking to our TWRA officer the other day. Uh, TWRA actually offers lots of programs for you. Trapping, ski shooting, uh, under education. You know, that's just one avenue, and that's, that's just 
because that's just one relationship that, that I've made. Uh, we've got a group of, uh, of people in Selma right now uh, trying to raise some money, looking towards a splash pad that would be placed at the Dixie Park. Great idea for the youth. You know, the, I don't know another one around uh, within uh, 65 miles. So, uh, uh, also, uh, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. There's uh, the property uh, down at the uh, industrial park by the school. Uh, the property that runs the length of the highway. Great spot for a bike trail. For, uh, you, you know, there's, there's a wooded area uh, on, the, on the east end or south end. Uh, have a staging area there. You're talking about a long bike trail. Get the, get the kids involved. Come out there with their parents. Uh, the sports complex was mentioned. Great idea. Those plans have already been set. Uh, there's a gentleman here today that worked very hard on uh, uh, getting, trying to get those uh, plans together. Well, they're still ready and available. And, uh, and you can guarantee that, uh, that stuff like that will definitely be brought up uh, with me. Uh, you know, the, uh, several of you here have, have kids, grandchildren, uh, playing, playing, playing ball. The sports complex is a great idea. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I got a good friend here today. We, we have talked about it, talked about it. And, uh, you know, you just got to do it. Quit saying no. I'm tired of excuses. I think the city can definitely get involved and help with, with, with ideas like this. Uh, one more quick one is a uh, fire department. There, there's, there's different avenues right there uh, for, for you uh, to be in a safe environment, but learn, but learn different things, and, uh, which is a great career to, to end up in. So, so there is many, many things that, that, uh, that Selma can do. And that's a good question, Tony. Thank you. Well, other than the things that I've mentioned, there are, are several things we can do for the youth. And I, I do agree that, that these things need to be done and, and we need to have a good workforce. But I think the first decision that has to be made is that you want this to be a regular mixture, a regular town, or do you want it to be a retirement center? Where it's headed right now is toward a retirement center a retired place for retired people to go <coughs> and, and die off, you know. You, you either got that choice or you got a choice to do something for the youth. And I think education is good. I think all these things are good. But I think you got that's not what the young people are interested in. When they're really young and teenagers, they're interested in having fun and you got to have something to give them entertainment and if you have to subsidize a bowling alley in here you do it. You do whatever is necessary to bring in and to bring the youth back to town when they when they leave college because they, in college they've got used to a different lifestyle than what we got here themselves. I know I went to college. So we've got to do these things to bring the youth in. And I like all you folks on up around my age, but I like to see the youth laughing and happy and back here in town because I've got enough aches and pains just like you have, or some of you, and that's, that's well and good. But we need to do whatever it takes, whatever it necessary, 